This is the first in a series of models that show the stages of mitosis. And you can see that this model is trying to show the process in some detail, but also it leaves out a lot of the normal detail that you would see in a cell, like a lot of the organelles that would normally be present in the cell. And as far as what it does include, it includes a nucleus, and perhaps that's the most important thing when you're talking about mitosis, looking at what goes on in the nucleus. It includes a lot of mitochondria, which you can see around the nucleus and the cytoplasm. And finally, you can see endoplasmic reticulum, which, as it should be, would be continuous with the nuclear envelope. So that's what we're seeing in, as far as uh, detail of structure. The most important thing uh, that you're seeing as far as mitosis con is concerned is inside the nucleus. And it's what happens uh, with the chromosomal material that's going to define the stages of mitosis that uh, we're going to see as we go through this series of models. So if you look closely inside the nucleus, you can see that we see a lot of this brown, thin brown thread throughout the nucleus. And this is meant to represent the chromosomal material that's spread out during interphase in the form of chromatin. Also, you can see there are distinct structures here and over here, and these would represent the nucleoli. Singular, uh, the singular word would be nucleolus. And so, as uh, the three things that would be strongly indicative of the cell being in, being in interphase is an intact nuclear envelope, which we see here, and chromatin inside the nucleus, so you don't see any indication of there being threads, which would represent the chromosomes that are condensing, that are coiling up before they are being before they move. And finally, seeing the nucleoli, which indicates that the cell can produce protein um, because the, the nucleolus is where the ribosomes are assembled. That is also an indication that this would have to be interphase. This model shows early prophase, and you can see that because of the way they represent the chromosomal material. The chromosomal material is no longer shown as chromatin, but you can actually start to see the threads. So they draw, the artist drew the threads. Right over here, you can see the threads. And so the threads are appearing, and you could start to see the nucleus, the nuclear envelopes start breaking up here. The pores are getting bigger, and um, so that is would be early prophase. Now I don't make a big deal about early or late prophase, so just just be familiar with the fact that this would represent prophase. And if you understand it's early prophase, well, so much the better. This model shows late prophase, and you can see that the chromosomes have tightened up even further, and they're getting more tightly packaged. And the fact that the material inside is a DNA is represented by the fact that the artist put these uh, red springs inside these blue objects and but they rep they would be representing the chromosomes and um, you can also see the uh, nuclear envelope is practically completely disintegrated at this point so you only see fragments of the nuclear envelope like here and over here and uh, pretty soon it'll be completely gone and and that's another characteristic of course of prophase that the nuclear envelope breaks down, gets out of the way, and the 
moving apparatus that's going to rearrange the chromosomes and make sure that they're evenly divided up between the two new cells uh, is in place and uh, it's called the spindle apparatus and you can see the shape is kind of like a spindle that's, that's the shape of the whole thing it's kind of like a spindle and it is represented by microtubules, which forms the spindle apparatus, or microtubules. So these red lines are no longer representing chromosomal threads as they were represented in the early prophase model, but the red lines are now representing uh, the microtubules. And the microtubules are emanating from the microtubular organizing centers. The microtubular organizing centers have, uh, have duplicated so, in other words, there are two uh, microtubular, uh, microtubular organizing centers. And you can see the center over here of one and the center over here of another. And you can, again, see the microtubules emanating from these centers. And in addition to, to these microtubules, you have microtubules that are just spreading out in all directions from the microtubule organizing center. And that is why, if you would just look at right over here, that is why this with these microtubules form uh, an aster, and uh, a star in other words. So these are astral microtubules, uh, aster microtubules that you're seeing around each microtubule organizing center. Okay, so again, the, the important thing to note is that uh, this is uh, still prophase, it's late prophase, and that we can see the spindle apparatus in this model, and you can see the microtubules that form the spindle apparatus, and you can see the microtubules that form the aster microtubules emanating from the microtubular organizing centers, also known as the centrosomes. This model represents metaphase, and it is the phase in which the chromosomes line up along a plane that is right in the middle of the cell, uh, the plane where the cells are eventually going to separate from one another by the process of cytokinesis. So right over here that you have the plane and it is also known as the equatorial plate. So you can either refer to this plane where you find the chromosomes as the equatorial plate or the metaphase plate. You can see that the artist is again representing the chromosomes by these blue structures and the DNA is shown within as being even more tightly coiled up. You can no longer see the spring um, uh, of the... Uh, that, that would uh, indicate that you have DNA. So this is, this is not in any way rep representing reality in, an, uh, in any precise way, but again, it's just a, a, a way that this artist is, is trying to show that um, what's going on with the chromosomes as they go through this process of uh, moving around and then separating from one another. So as these, as, as these are separating from one another, what, what you have, um, you have um, the chromatids are actually what are separating from each other. So each chromosome is replicated as a chromatid and until they're ready to separate, they're connected by a central mirror and these strands of the, of the spindle apparatus would attach to the kinetochore of each chromatid and pull them to their respective poles, going to each of the new cells that will uh, form when the, the cell finally divides and, set, and you get separation by uh, cytokinesis. So, right over here, you can imagine that uh, you have a kinetochore, and 
it's being pulled in this direction, and the same thing right over here. Let's do this again. Here, here you can imagine right over here that there is a uh, kinetic ore, and the microtubule that's attached to it is pulling it towards uh, one uh, side, uh, one pole, and you have a kinetic ore here, and the microtubule is pulling this to the opposite pole. So they're going to separate uh, soon and give us the, our next phase. So this would represent metaphase. This model represents anaphase. Anaphase is where the chromatids, which are now chromosomes, because the chromatids are now separate, uh, where the chromosomes are being pulled to their respective poles. And they're still attached to the microtubules, which are pulling them by the microtubules that are forming part of the spindle apparatus. And they're still pulling on the structure known as the kinetochore. And you can see that the, uh, the loose ends of the chromosomes as they're being pulled are dragging behind. So you tend to see, if you look at a microscope slide, you tend to see V-shaped objects or J-shaped objects, which again would represent these chromosomes in an actual cell as they're being pulled uh, to either pole. So you would see that if you were looking at a microscope slide, and this is not uh, an actual cell, of course, this is a model of a cell, so keep that in mind. Uh, everything else is the same. You can see that the uh, a little bit better, the uh, microtubular organizing center and the astro microtubules that are radiating out like a star from the centrosome. And again, you can also see the microtubules form this thing called the spindle apparatus. So this would be anaphase. I would consider this model as representing telophase. Now, there's a number of things I don't like about the way it's represented here. Uh, and so, let, but let's look at what you can see and then I'll talk about the things that you're not, sh it's not being shown. First of all, you can see that the chromosomes have now gotten to their respective opposite poles in the uh, cell that will soon divide into two new cells and you can see right over here that the artist is showing the DNA uh, represented by these red s strings and so the uh, the chromosomal material is starting to uncoil uh, in preparation for becoming accessible in the newly in the recently created cells by division and another thing that you can see is that the nuclear envelope is reforming. So, so what appears to be endoplasmic reticulum here, because uh, you have a membrane-filled space, and um, with that's represented as like a flat plate. Uh, these these uh, uh, membranes are starting to uh, form around the chromosomes and reconstitute a nuclear envelope that is going to compartmentalize the uh, chromosomal materials in a nucleus. Uh, so um, another thing another thing that you can see is uh, cytokinesis is occurring here and cytokinesis is represented by this cleavage furrow that you can see right over here and over here and it's actually what's happening is that the cell is becoming constricted along this plane and it's getting narrower and narrower and it eventually um, split the cell into two new cells and so this would be the process of cytokinesis so I would consider this early telophase. Now this would be late telophase and you can see that the nuclear envelope is 
practically completely reconstituted here. Maybe it doesn't quite look like it's reconstituted down over here, but it's it's getting closer and closer to being an intact nucleus. And you can see that the chromosomes, which were represented as springs uh, in the previous model, are now represented as threads because they've stretched out. And you can start to see the nucle nucleolus is appearing also in, in, this, in the nucleus. And cytokinesis has gotten further along. You're seeing a narrower constriction between the two new cells. So this would be a late telophase. And you know what? Again, I don't make a big deal about early and late. So if you would just call this telophase on the exam, uh, that would be sufficient. You wouldn't have to say anything more than that. I would call this the last stage of telophase. However, you can see that the only thing that hasn't happened here is that the two new cells haven't completely split from one another. So cytokinesis is still going on right over here. And I think the only reason, um, I'm not sure why this model uh, is necessary, because um, we already have two models that are showing telophase, and so this one is just practically two newly created cells. Uh, so, uh, but you can see that this would have to be the end of the process, because if you look at the nucleus right over here, it is completely intact. Uh, the pores are now reappearing in the nuclear envelope, and you can see two nuclei inside the nucleus. And finally, the chromatin looks like the chromatin when we looked at the interphase model. It looks the same. So uh, if you see this on the exam, you can call it a telophase, and that would be, that would be acceptable as an answer.